This is Dan. He wants to start investing his money, but he has neither the $100,000 to give to a regular money manager, nor the time and information to analyze the markets himself. Charts, oil, euro, Apple stocks, it's all just too much to look into. But what if Dan could see and copy what his Wall Street buddies Tim and Eric are doing? Well, actually, he can. Introducing eToro, the world's largest investment network, where people share their investments in a social community. Dan chats with them and follows them to get updated about every trade they do. He can spot the top performers and look at their open book profiles to see all their activity and performance, including picking the ones to automatically copy whatever they're trading by choosing how much he wants to invest in them. So now Dan is using the wisdom of the crowds to build his people-based portfolio. He is now investing like a financial guru. Millions of people have already connected on eToro to start investing in the markets. Welcome to eToro, your investment network. And by the way, it's free. Register an account on eToro.com. And you are watching eToro for Beginners webinar. Um, I'm your host, Annie. I run community over at eToro. And tonight's webinar is going to be an overview of where to find everything that you need on the platform, um, as well as a rundown of the things that you need to know when you actually begin trading. So uh, we'll start right at the beginning. Um, my, my default screen here is my watch list. Um, I won't spend too much time on this right now just because I do have a separate webinar already done and dusted um, on this topic. Um, but what it is, what is worth mentioning here is that the, um, the, the markets and the people that you are putting onto your watch list or you're essentially following are what is going to populate your news feed, which we will come to very shortly. Um, this is also your screen that will essentially be your trading dashboard. Um, so these are the instruments that you need quick access to. Um, I will show you in a second how to enable your one click trading so you can come in there and just press buy and sell with your defaults. Um, and, and this is essentially the place where you're going to do everything in one place, uh, in one go. Um, so. I guess one of the main points to, to sort of brush over here is um, you can change your layout to whatever feels most comfortable for you. Um, um, you've got your you've got the ability to add your markets from here directly or when you are on a market wall to go in there um, and add them to an add them to a watch list. So here you'll see on Euro USD, I've already got it on my watch list um, as well as my recently invested watch list. You can, of course, create a new one. Um, you can add up to 12 watch lists, each with 50 items. So that's 50 people or 50 uh, unique instruments. Also from your watch list, um, you can set your price alerts. So these are essentially going to go off. Um, you'll get a notification that looks like this um, when it hits the price that you are um, setting here. Um, so I will just go ahead and maybe set a really easy one that's likely to happen in the next few minutes. So what's this? I won't, I won't put it too far off. Um, Let's just have that there so we know what it looks like. Um, and that's kind of it for now. Um, you can also filter here. So if you have a watch list um, with an array of different instruments and you just want to see maybe um, just the currency pairs, then you would go here and then you've got it right in front of you. Um, if you've got uh, you know, if you've got earnings coming up and you just want to focus on your stocks and you just want to trade your stocks now and the markets, you know, just ahead of market open, perhaps, um, then again, this is the kind of thing where you would sort of be able to filter um, to the things that you're looking for. Um, so also from your watch list, OK, we've covered the the, the price alert. You've got that there. Um, as already mentioned, I have done this in more detail before. So um, once this webinar is over, I will put a link to the um, 
watch list webinar on my wall which is at Annie Toro in the feed um, so you can just pop over there and I'll have that there for you if you want to see a bit more about how to use them and how to add people and and what all of that really means um, so in terms of actually opening your trades um, I'll get to that kind of later on in the webinar, but first I sort of want to walk through um, these three tabs. So in my portfolio, um, I've already got uh, some Euro USD trades. If you just click on the row, you'll see them here. You'll see how um, they're performing right now, of course. You'll see uh, where you opened them, how many units you've opened them with. Um, you can obviously modify them and you can close them directly from here. Um, what I will do is we'll, we'll, we'll open a trade a little bit from here and then we'll just kind of run through all the things that you sort of need to understand about the trade before you get in there. Um, so in your portfolio, you really just have your open trades right now. Um, you can, again, sort of sort the, the, the columns that you want, um, customize the view a little bit for, for what works best for you, <clears throat> for what you want to see. Um, here you've also got your history, which will tell you, um, you know, how much you've spent on that trade in terms of fees, um, you know, where it opened, where it closed. Um, <clears throat> you won't necessarily see it on here, but if you do go to your portfolio, uh, I don't actually have any open trades here, <clears throat> but um, I'll take someone else as an example. Let's take Carex. Um, from your portfolio, you will actually see um why a position closed so here beside it you've got the reason so anything with just the little flags um or just the the, the icon for that instrument uh, will mean that you closed it manually whereas the take profit the tp of course means take profit your stop loss um and then you've got a couple others which which you won't see under here because she doesn't copy anybody but um on uh on, on positions that you've copied from someone else, you will typically see, um, you know, different little little icons here that will tell you why something closed. Um, so that's the first thing that you can see for your history, but only under your public portfolio. Um, in your portfolio here, uh, you've got your history here. You've got your orders. Um, orders we'll get to when we actually open a trade. Um, and that's that's kind of it. For, for this view. Um, of course, if you have any questions in the meantime, please feel free to ask me and I'll get to it either now or, or at the end. Um, <clears throat> then the third third um, item on your menu here is your newsfeed. So as I mentioned, your newsfeed is populated with the instruments that you follow and the content from the people that you follow. So when I say the instruments, um, because I've got Euro USD in my watch list, I'm seeing this even though I don't follow either of these people in this in this particular account. Um, so you've got your newsfeed coming in. Um, all of these are going to be people that are verified. Um, so you are less likely to see maybe some spam here. Um, However, that's your that's just your news feed, but you've also got the the main feed, which is the public English feed. Um, different languages will have obviously their own their own version of this. So, you know, if, if you set your language as German, you'll see the public German feed and then you'll just see all the content from people from Germany. Um, obviously, English is the, the largest one because most most of the regions will just communicate in English because it'll reach more people. Um, in any case, you you will notice um, if you do see something in another language that there is a translate button at the end of every post um, that's automatically picked up from Google. Um, so that's kind of it for the the public English feed. Um, of course, here you can kind of add somebody to your watch list directly. Um, you can turn off your notifications. So if you um, comment in here and you don't want to and you don't want to keep getting the notifications that somebody's responded, you can just turn them off from here um, and you can flag something as spam if you don't like it or you don't think it belongs in the community. Um, one flag from one person is not enough for the for the for the content to disappear, but after a certain number, um, it will get hidden. Um, 
if you do see spam though and, and you want it checked or you think it needs to be checked then just tag me in it and we will review it or we'll get rid of it or whatever the case may be um, so that's just a quick overview of those three tabs um, in terms of trade markets it's pretty straightforward um, this is literally just a page where you can kind of weed through every um, sort of area that we have so you can go into your advanced search, go into your stocks, um, filter by perhaps the exchange, you can go to the US stocks, you can go to, um, you know, let's go to the FTSE, for example, and then you've just got everything here. Of course, there are quite a few. So, you know, you, you're going to have a few screens there. Um, you can go into your industry, say you want financial, and then you've got all your financial companies um, listed here. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. Copy people is pretty much the same thing. Um, much like the watch lists, I do have a separate webinar about copying um, and about using this tool and about finding these people um, and what all of these parameters mean. So I will link that as well at the end of the webinar. Um, for now, I just kind of want to focus on the um, things that are sort of prevalent at the very beginning when you just kind of come in and you don't really know what you're doing, you don't know where to go and what to look at. Um, so those are that. Uh, those are the first two. Copy funds, same thing. Um, we can cover that separately. Um, if you do want more information on any of these things, please do ask me afterwards. And, you know, I've already got things that I can I can give you or information that I can share with you. Um, but what I really wanted to get to now was, of course, actually opening a trade and the things that you need to consider. So we'll go to EURUSD. Um, what we can actually do here is sort of set your parameters for your one click trading. So earlier I showed you this on the watch list. So, OK, my one click trading is enabled there. So if I go to EURUSD, for example, Say I want 500, I want 10 leverage. Um, did I save the settings? I think I, I think I already saved them on the Euro USD. Um, but essentially what your one click trading does is allows you to just open your trade just like that without any pop up. So in your watch list, um, I think I set one on oil as well. No, I didn't do that. Um, so when you when you enable your one click trading, you can come in here, set whatever you're comfortable with, um, change your leverage, use these settings, open your trade now. And then again, you can just keep doing that directly from your watch list. Obviously, it can get a bit dangerous um, if you are on your watch list quite a bit. And, um, you know, you you're just curious about the the spread or something and you want to click into it um so just be wary of when you have one click enabled um so you don't open any trades that you don't want to get into or at least have a play with it on the virtual account which if you're not already familiar you can you can access from here um so sorry to deflect from the original point that i was trying to make um which is euro usd here's the trade um so in your trade pop up, actually, I'll take something else that doesn't have one click on it. So in your trade window, um, you've obviously got your amount, which is how much of your own money from your um, account balance you want to put into this. Um, let's just set 500 this is obviously my demo account so I'm not too bothered um and your leverage so your leverage um is it's it's defined as borrowed capital but all it really does is kind of increase the position size so it increases what is called the unit size which is this here um and that is so when you are opening a trade with you know a hundred dollars or you know, even five hundred dollars compared to the market overall is a very small amount. And the way many instruments move, you're not really going to see any return for that amount of money. So the way we do it, the way it's kind of done industry wide um, is that it works on units. Um, and so obviously the, the leverage you use will increase the units. So your five hundred 
times your your one to 100 leverage is going to give you 50,000 units that's quite a big position um, and obviously the the higher the leverage you use the the higher your exposure is um, it doesn't leave you a lot of flexibility in terms of your uh, your stop loss and your take profit just because each movement is going to be worth more money um, so the higher the leverage the the quicker or the more likely you are to sort of have that position um, kind of go the, the other direction. Um, so that's sort of the first thing to consider is, is you know, you want to keep a leverage that you're comfortable with. Um, and also rather than sort of thinking um, you've got a, posi a position of $500, always think of it as you've got a position of 5,000 units, which is not bad, not huge, um, but it's also not very small either. Um, so that's kind of the first thing to think about uh, in terms of, of when you're opening your trade. Um, the next thing is that you will notice between the sell and the buy price, you've got a difference there. Um, so what that is, uh, what that essentially comes down to is what is called the spread, which is eToro's fee as a service provider. Um, contrary to what you may see in the feed, this is our fee. There are no other actual um, um, eToro fees involved in trading. There are other costs, but not other eToro fees. So what I'm trying to say essentially is that, um, you know, this is the this is the price right now. And this is the price if you are long this instrument. Long is, is buy and sell is short. Um, so that difference, which here is four pips. So you'll see that there's a. Uh, point zero 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 four uh difference um that is the fee that eToro takes our fees you can find under um the help section of the website so if you're just in here you go help your fees are right here and that's this page um this will essentially tell you what the typical spread is on each instrument um you've got your indices your commodities everything up there um What's important to mention on this page is that a typical spread is not a guaranteed spread. It's not a guaranteed price. So by typical, we are saying that this is essentially the minimum fee. This is um, the fee is usually going to be this. It's usually going to be three pips on the euro dollar or as I showed you above, it's uh, four pips on the, um, uh, the dollar pound. Um, but that is a minimum. So if the market moves, um, if the market is volatile, if there is low liquidity, both of which I will touch on in a second, um, the spread is, is subject to fluctuate along with the actual um, um, instrument itself. Um, so it is mentioned up here that uh, the below spreads are the minimal spreads and are not guaranteed. The spread will vary according to market market conditions and liquidity. And there may be instances where market conditions cause spreads to widen beyond the spreads displayed below. So um, essentially, the spread will never be lower than this, but it can possibly be higher. And that is something to bear in mind um, when you're sort of entering the trade. So right now I may see this price, but by the time I actually click open open trade um, and the position itself goes into the market, it could slip. Um, all of this happens in a matter of milliseconds. So it's not something that takes, you know, several seconds to happen, um, but it can move so quickly that you can mess, miss that price. Um, not completely impossible, um, but not that common either. Um, so that's something to bear in mind. Um, usually you see the spreads kind of widen up um, around market close. Um, so a bit later at night during the maybe just before the market breaks. Um, also during economic events. So if somebody important is speaking or there is a report that comes out um, or just some kind of economic data that will typically um, move that instrument because it's, it's giving you a sentiment on um, the economy. And so people are rushing in to either get into the trade or get out of the trade based on whatever is happening. Um, so that those are usually the periods. So when I say um, liquidity, I'm essentially referring to demand and demand and supply. 
um, um, for lack of a better way of saying it. Um, so in terms of, of say there's low liquidity, it means that there just aren't enough people in. It just isn't, um, you know, for you as a, as someone buying, there isn't someone there to sell. So, um, you know, low liquidity means that either the, the spread will widen to sort of compensate because there aren't enough people in there or um, um, the instrument may be disabled altogether just because there's there's not enough happening. Um, and then similarly with volatility, um, when it moves a bit too much or there's too many people trying to get in, prices can't be filled because they're just it's just all over the place. Um, so the same thing may happen. The price may go up. Um, and by price, I mean the, the spreads, the spreads may widen um, or the, the instrument may be um, unavailable altogether. So um, that's kind of the main thing just to bear in mind with your position um, is that you're not necessarily going to get the price you see right in front of you in that moment. I don't know where my window went. There it is. Um, so you may not get that exact price that you you see in that moment. I mean, you will now because it's it's pretty calm right now. Nothing um, out of the ordinary is happening. There's there's no reports coming out in the UK right now. Um, so this should be fine. And if I just set that, it's fine. Um, so so just bear that in mind, particularly if you choose to trade over the volatile events. Um, so I've already said that the the spread is our main fee. Um, but what you will notice on here is that there is also a um, overnight fee which is a daily uh, cost of actually keeping your position open overnight um, so the way that sort of works is that um, you know markets open in the morning and they sort of close in the evening in every region but because we are global um, because most brokers will provide you know service and and sort of their products across the world um, what we essentially do is is kind of have different um, regions market hours overlapping, which is why you're able to trade pretty much around the clock um, for most instruments Monday through Friday. So, but what you're really doing is that the the original position is being kept open when the market is actually closed. Um, so there is a cost to that. And these costs are dependent on the interest rates. So you will notice on um, a lot of them that say on the sell, you may have a credit and on the buy, you will have your debit. So it doesn't mean that we want you to sell um, or that we're going to charge you money because you want to buy. It, mean, it just means that that's how it works out. Um, um, for those rollovers, because the interest rate can change fairly regularly, these fees are subject to change quite regularly. We don't update you when they change. Um, you will be updated only if something significant happens. So if, say, um, an instrument with that previously had no overnight fees now has overnight fees, if we change the, the sort of um, contract on that or, or whatever it is, uh, then we will let you know. But generally, if, say, this tomorrow is 0 0.05, we're not going to tell you that. It's it's up to you to make sure that you know what the overnight fees are. Um, so they're displayed here. You'll see that they are set on most instruments. Um, on stocks, you don't have overnight fees on the unleveraged position. So this is only on leveraged. Um, and you will also see this on the trading pop up on, on the trading window here. Um, so here it says seven, seven forty uh, forty eight for the night. And then for the weekend, it's twenty two dollars. Um, thing to bear in mind there is that the overnight fees essentially taken um, two days before the period that is carried over. So your weekend fees so your overnight fees for the weekend basically are taken Wednesday nights on um, currencies in particular. Um, so tonight, uh, this position would be charged $22. So it'd be tripled um, to cover basically um, the, the next three nights. Um, next three nights, meaning sort of 
uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, and so if you even if you open a trade, you know, an hour before the fee is credited, at, uh, sorry, before the, the fee is debited and you close your trade before the weekend, you still would have already paid that fee. So it's not something you can get back. However, um, by the same token, if you open your trade literally after the market break, um, and you haven't and you haven't sort of had it open during that window when the fee is taken, then you will get your position open overnight um, over the weekend without paying any additional fees. So it works both ways there. Um, that's pretty much it on this front. Um, I don't know that there's anything else to really cover. I really wanted to get, you know, sort of a grasp over the the, the rollovers are there, that the, the spreads can move. Um, these are kind of the main points that I see coming up a lot um, for new people in the feed every day. Um, so these are the things that you really need to pay attention to. Um, also understand that, um, you know, we're in a period right now where there is a lot of volatility, um, be it because of the political climate or just, you know, years of all sorts of things happening in the markets. Um, it is quite a tricky time. It's not as easy as it maybe it would have been 10 years ago to just go into a trade and have it go quite naturally um, without without too much worry around it. Um, so I will add all of these into the post that I put on my wall in a little bit. Um, if you want to do any additional reading on that, if you have any questions, now's the time to ask me. Um, I don't have any right now. Um, um, someone's just asked me about some of the emails. Um, if there are emails that you uh, are getting that maybe someone else is not getting, uh, it may be that they are only open to um, certain groups of people. So maybe only funded accounts or maybe only premium accounts if that's an if that's the account you hold uh, and the email you're getting. But generally you can go into your settings and kind of decide which emails you want and which ones you don't want. Um, and if there's anything in particular that you you really think you want to get or your friend wants to get, then let us know and and I'm sure we can sort that out or at least understand why they're not getting it and whether they should be getting it. Um, so that's pretty much it from me. Um, I don't seem to have any questions. As always, please do come to my wall. If you think of something that you want to know, um, if you want me to explain something um, in more detail. Um, and thank you for watching.